Welcome to Managing Distractions. Number five, it's Dr. Ken here with you with our Cognitive Toolbox. Dealing with the fear of missing out and other stuff, or what's commonly known as FOMO. So, one of the big distractions of today is, of course, our smartphones. The smartphone is a great tool, but often it's also an even greater distraction. Why? Is it the fear of missing out? Actually, I don't think so. Why? I think it's about entertainment. Electrical physics is hard by definition. So when we can no longer engage, we head for some kind of entertainment, and that often comes through our phones. Then there is the electronic buzz or hum, the pings, the beeps, the notifications that keep interrupting our train of thought and thinking and therefore interrupting our learning. The problem is not the phone itself, but how we might go about managing it. Your phone informs you of great things, but it also forms you for good or for ill. It forms you in the way you read and think, often causing shallow skimming, no time to reflect as you flick through notifications on your phone. It forms your problem-solving skills with quick access to Google, search, or there's got to be an app for that. It also forms the pace of your life, learning, and dare, dare I say, how it brings meaning to that learning. So why is it the fear of missing out? As I said before, I actually don't think that's the case. I think it is the fear of not being in the online action from the start. It's about connectiveness, or maybe even lack of it. Connecting into a community is no longer found in your family, sports, activity, club, church, community, etc. For many, it's about the online community. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but it does tend to be transitory. And as a result, it's often shallow. And with electrical physics, unfortunately, we cannot do with that in a shallow way. We've got to think deeply. The smartphone is full of entertainment, from socialising to playing games. Electrical physics, as I said, is hard, difficult by definition. So when we can no longer engage, we head for the entertainment of our phones as a distract and relief. There are two issues here. One, the phone does not encourage persistence. And the second, it offers entertainment instead of determination. So the phone is a double-edged sword, actually working against your learning. So the phone discourages persistence. And unfortunately, the learning of electrotechnology is going to take lots of effort and lots of persistence. And unfortunately, quite often, learning about electrotechnology is anything but entertaining. It's just the determination to learn something new. So, as I said, your phone is this double-edged sword actually working against your learning unless you're prepared to manage it very, very well. So, what about the electronic buzz, the hum, the pings, the beeps, and the notification? Just the phone's presence creates this kind of electronic buzz or this white noise in the background. The very presence of the buzz of anticipation creates distraction, let alone the actual buzz and ping in and of itself. Many people can work with the sounds of TV or other people talking in the background, and so it is with smartphones. They will affect you. They will affect the how and why of where you learn and work. For me, I have been able to learn to focus, to block out the buzz, the hum, the peaks. I can sit um, in a crowded room and read a book, but that's come with lots and lots of practice. 
So how can we go about managing our phone's distraction? The problem is not the phone itself, but how can we actually manage it? We could put a hammer through it. This will work for a time. Unfortunately, we'll soon find other distractions. Such is our nature, I'm afraid. So maybe putting the hammer through it is not such a good idea. It might look good to start with, but not in the end. You need to realize that updating social media or answering a text or two is not ignoring your friends and family or missing out. Yes, work at your relationships in other ways beyond your phone. They do understand that at this stage in your life, learning is very, very important. You can practice using your phone as a tool, not a toy. Start by putting your phone in your bag on silent. Then check it only at morning tea or at lunch. You have to be a bit of an adult here and learn how to manage your phone. Practice ignoring the electronic buzz. Start with half and build up to maybe an hour or two. That's all that is needed. So when you need to do a bit of extra study in electro technology, put the phone away for half an hour. Turn it to silent, stick it in a bag somewhere and do some study. So how is your phone actually forming you? Your phone is forming you mostly in the way that you read, the way you engage your learning. Phone screens are not conducive to prolonged reading or viewing. I must admit I read, on the average, about 14 to 20 books a year. One or two of those books is on my iPad, the rest is physically paper-based reading. And I do find paper-based reading much easier than on a device. So phone reading is short and limited. The result is poor skimming type reading habits. The resulting comprehension, therefore, is very poor. If you don't take the time to read, stop, slow down and reflect, then your comprehension is going to be poor. The habit becomes reading lots of little things, but nothing substantially in depth. So, the result is, learning is poor. It takes time to read deeply, to reflect well, and think through the concepts. See the links, and then create the meaning, which effectively is learning. This is the process of learning. So phones don't work for this particular purpose, I'm afraid. Your phone is forming you with your problem solving skills. Forms your problem solving skills with quick access to Google search or another search engine or something similar. Google is forming your search because it knows your preferences you tend to go with whatever it first offers. The skill is to know how to manage your search engine and it not manage you. Unless you are skilled with Boolean logic, this will be difficult. Boolean is a kind of logic system, it's a mathematical logic system, which your phone and your search engines use. So if you want to go and learn a little bit of Boolean logic, you can actually manage your searching rather than your searching managing you. When all 100,000 options come back prioritised for you, it's information overload. And often we don't take the time to filter the first five, let alone 10 or more. So it's very easy to get all these options on your phone and then only dig down maybe into the first one or two, and then only very shallowly. It forms the pace of your life, learning and dare I say, the meaning that's created. Phones are so convenient, so that we give them lots of power, and we do this unwittingly. We don't realize we're giving the phone the power. The power manages the pace of our lives because little or 
no planning is actually required. We get a text, and if the request is better than the one we have currently going on, away we go. This has some advantages, but we lose the skill of forward planning. The result is no planning, time is wasted. The pace of life is accelerated because we have failed to plan and manage our time well. In the end, technology is driving us instead of us driving the technology for the benefit of others and for the benefit of our own learning. So how can you reform your phone? You can practice reading for longer periods, 15 minutes instead of 15 seconds. This is all you need to do for technical reading. 15 minute stints is all you need to spend a little bit of time and reflect a little bit more deeply. Read books, read websites on a computer, it's fine. Take time, five minutes to reflect, write down just a dot point summary of the 10 or 15 minutes reading you've done. This forces you to go through the reflection process and more deeply embed the learning. Search on your computer, not on your phone. And as I mentioned earlier, maybe learn a little bit of Boolean. So you can search for this and this and not this. That's how Boolean works. Decide how you will discriminate your search. Determine the key words is a good start. Take a little time to dig a little deeper and get past just page one. Use the management tools in your phone, the calendar, to do this. Make lists of what you're going to do and the order in which you're going to search and study those kinds of things. All these tools are available in your phone, so use the tools that are available to you. Assign a fixed amount of time for entertainment each day and a fixed amount of time to do some study. And is there an app for this? Yep, find apps that will assist your learning. There's one called Elect Toolkit and one called iCircuit that I have on my phone. Very, very handy for practicing formulas, practicing concepts, and the iCircuit. If you want to develop a little circuit to see whether the physics works out or the math problem you're playing with works out, iCircuit allows you to actually draw up the circuit, apply the values, and it will tell you the results very, very great little tool is iCircuit. Make your own phone work for you, not you work for it. You, you can't do big things if you're distracted by the small things. So you've got to learn to manage those small things. Yes, they can be important. And especially when you're at tech, etc. Your boss actually does not need to ring you during the day. You can check your messages at lunchtime. You can check your messages after work. And you've got plenty of time to talk to your girlfriend after tech is over. So manage your time and the time that you have got set aside to study. Make sure your phone and other devices are not distracting you from it.